This is a session on measuring IPFS. Um, the, the title of the slide is a little bit different um, and um, focuses on the IPFS network observatory, mm -hmm. which is what we eventually want to build out of this effort that we have started uh, recently. So the main motivation here is that um, we need measurements because without measurements, we uh, we cannot improve whatever we have, do not have measurements for. Uh, we cannot find bottlenecks and find the uh, kind of slow performing components of protocols. Uh, and we also need measurements when we want to improve something, but um, we cannot know whether the improvement that we've just deployed is actually improving performance or degrading performance or having some other um, uh, unwanted kind of side effect. Uh, so, yeah, so this is what this team is uh, is doing. Uh, the, the, the effort and the team is called Probe Lab. Uh, I am Yanis, I uh, forgot to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a research scientist at Protocol Labs um, and together with a team of uh, excellent people uh, at PL and outside of PL. Uh, we are trying to make this thing happen uh, to have an IPFS network observatory. So, um, yeah, uh, as I kind of implied, measuring um, network performance is not uh, a target in itself. Uh, it's, of course, interesting to see graphs, many of which you're going to see today, uh, and see how uh, things are performing out there in the wild. But the ultimate end target is to identify bottlenecks and see where there is space for improvement and eventually uh, design protocol optimizations and make protocols perform even better than they do. So we've run uh, a big measurement campaign um, which started last summer, it's still ongoing. This is only a part of it. Uh, just because we had a nice figure for that, basically. <laughs> uh, but we still, th this car is carrying on. Um, we um, got a small part of this and we focused on that period there uh, and we dived a lot deeper um, into the measurements that we collected. Uh, and we found several opportunities. So there are uh, a lot of kind of low hanging fruit into this, uh, one of which is the provide process in the IPFS network. So the provide process is when you want to publish something to the network, you, um, it takes a long time to uh, actually get that public and others are able to um, go and get the data. So we see down there that um, on the x-axis is time. So um, it measures the time that it takes to actually have content available and we see that it goes more like not not even tens of seconds, like more than a hundred seconds. Uh, and this is a process where the network is trying to find the best possible peers in order to store um, the uh, to store the content with, to store the provider record and so on. Uh, so what we actually found out is that. Um, Finding the peers that were going to contact in, in order to make the content public is found in less than a second, right? So, well, even if not all of the peers, most of the peers are found within a very, a very short time period. So what this tells us is that instead of having to wait tens and hundreds of seconds, uh, we can actually become smarter and find ways where we can uh, reduce the provide time by an order of magnitude. Uh, this is a very important uh, part that, uh, of the process of publishing something uh, in the IPFS network. And we're working on solutions to make this thing happen and have much shorter uh, publish times. Uh, another thing we did is that we wanted to see how the, um, the DHT lookup process works. Uh, so the DHT lookup is when you, you're trying to retrieve something from the network. Uh, so as a user, you, uh, you go and request for a CAD and you want to get the content back. So um, there are several um, kind of steps that are taken by the network and the protocols in order to make this happen. Uh, and we wanted to see, you know, is, uh, is some of these steps kind of pro problematic? Uh, is it going easy, some step that is taking too long? Um, you know, is there a bottleneck somewhere and so on? 
So what we did is that we wanted to interact with the, uh, the main network, so we didn't want to do simulations or spin up just five or ten nodes and play around with them. We wanted to interact with the actual network. So what we did was that um, we published, we spun up several nodes that were controlled by ourselves, and uh, we tracked down what happens throughout the process. So uh, one of the nodes were pub was publishing a CAD that was only known to itself, so it's not some public document, uh, which means that no one else knows about this CAD. Uh, no one else has retrieved it or cached it or pinned it. Um, and this CAD then was communicated with the rest of the nodes that we were controlling. And then we, we started um, requesting that CAD from other parts of the network. So, you know, it, it has been actually the whole process of providing content and then coming back to, to retrieve the content. And we found several interesting results, uh, such as uh, a summary of which is uh, just this one. Um, and um, you see in the uh, leftmost figure is the um, overall uh, retrieval duration. In the rightmost figure is when you actually connect, you find the content and you connect and like the line speed kind of thing. Um, the point-to-point -point connection where you transfer content. And the middle one is the DHT walk duration, right? Um, so I, I'm not going to go into detail. I'll point you to places where you can read much more about this. Uh, but one interesting thing that um, you can observe here is that the first two, the leftmost and the middle figure, um, they're exactly the same. They're identical. It's just that the leftmost is shifted by one second, right? And um, this tells us that um, the bit swap process, which is the first step that is happening when we try to retrieve content from IPFS, is taking this whole one second, whereas uh, the DHD walk itself it's, it is pretty quick, right? We can see that from several parts of the, of the world, like several of the instances that we had, um, the retrieval latency, the DHT walk latency is less than a second, right? There is more detail here, but the takeaway point is that, you know, um, the DHT has improved quite a bit. Uh, it, of course, goes to two and three and four seconds in some cases, but uh, we see that for a large part of it, it can be kept below one second, uh, which is great news. It's, it's great performance. Now, why do we have to wait for this extra second is a question that needs to be answered. Uh, and basically, you know, shifting that back means that, um, you know, if Bitswap does not manage to find content in many cases, um, you know, we are just waiting for one second and increasing basically the content uh, the DHT, well, not the DHT lookup, but the general retrieval process by a whole second, by more than perhaps 100% in some cases, uh, which is something we don't want, obviously, right? Uh, so we're now working on uh, identifying what should we do with, um, with the BitSwap process. Should we start the BitSwap discovery together with uh, the DHT lookup so that these two steps kind of uh, progress in parallel. Um, so this is the second opportunity. And what I want to highlight here is that there is a lot of low hanging fruit that if you start looking deeper into protocol operation and uh, performance, uh, you can you know, uh, figure them out and design easy, uh, in some cases easy, not always easy, protocol optimizations. Um, but you can, you can find other things as well. So if you, um, by me having um, measurements that run continuously on the network, you can figure out what is uh, the agent version uptake. Um, you can figure out what is the churn rate of the network, um, the overall churn rate, the leftmost figure there, um, the uh, agent version based churn rate, and then the release. Uh, so for example, you can figure out if some release is churning too much, maybe, I don't know, maybe there might be some bug or something. So it's good for monitoring um, and uh, identification of bugs and stuff like that. Uh, we can also see what is the coverage. Like we found out that IPFS peers, uh, server peers are found in more than 2,700 um, ASCs, ISPs, uh, which is great news. It means that, you know, there is lo lots of kind of diversity in terms of geography and all that. Um, we can see concentration as well. So we found out that the top 10 AESs 
uh, contain where IPFS nodes have been found uh, contain 65% uh, of the IPFS, uh, sorry, of IP addresses of IPFS peers, right? So there is some concentration there as well. It doesn't mean that um, it's fully distributed, the, the system uh, equally among the AESCs that we have found. Um, you can also see what is the cloud provider dependency. So you would expect that lots of DHT server peers are deployed uh, in uh, big cloud providers, which is not the case as it turns out. We uh, have found that it's less than 3% actually that is um, that of IPFS server peers that uh, appear in the big cloud providers at least. Some of them uh, we cannot really know if it's a cloud provider, but even if they are, uh, there are none of the very well-known and very big ones, which is great. I mean, uh, for kind of decentralization purposes, uh, is a great thing to know. Um, you can find lots of that in uh, weekly reports that we produce at stats.ipfs.network. Um, there, there are many more results than what I uh, presented here, and it's a great resource to go and figure out more about more details about the network. Uh, we have also um, documented everything that we have done so far. Well, not even everything, but a good part of what we have done uh, in a recent paper that we have published with um, this great group of people there. Uh, I'll share the slides. You can get the CID. It's on IPFS. Uh, it is soon going to be in the ACM library as well uh, as open access. So you're going to be able to find it from there as well. Uh, highly recommend it to read through. Uh, includes a nice description of how the whole system works, uh, what measurements we did, the methodologies, and all the details, uh, a summary of which I'm talking about right now today. Uh, so with that in mind, we want to go on and build you know, a bigger thing, which is going to be the IPFS Network Observatory, which of course doesn't have a definition. Like uh, you don't know exactly where you want to reach. You can always, there, there is always much more detail uh, that you can go into, but um, we want to uh, have several continuous monitoring and measurement um, uh, processes running. And we're not doing this alone. We, we're doing this with um, a great community of people that uh, also have the same interest. We had a workshop last week in Bologna um, on decentralized internet networks, protocols, and systems. Uh, it, was, it was great. Uh, lots of people were there. Uh, we had several keynote talks, um, 10 papers, two tutorials, three demos, a great day generally. So um, yeah, the, this space is definitely open for collaboration. And here are some call outs for now. Um, you can check the probe lab page, which currently lives in Notion. Um, I, I can, I'll share the slides and you can link through there. We have several grants open uh, specifically on network measurements that you can find on the Radius um, platform. Uh, again, the link is there, and we have this GitHub repository where much of the action happens and much of the results is actually are, uh, are published. Now, with that, let's come to the plan for the day. Uh, we have several talks from uh, on very interesting topics. I'm not going to go through each one of them. The speakers are going to explain what they're going to be talking about, uh, but we're going to find out lots of things about whether, you know, the protocols that we're all using and building and improving are actually you know, performing as they should, or if we need to have any um, uh, modification, optimization, and any recommendation that we can give to um, the, the community and the teams developing. So the talks, some, some important notes. We've got lots of time for each of the talks. Uh, most of them are not expected to go on for all of their slots. The, um, the, the point here is that we should make this interactive. So ask questions, uh, bring, up, bring up topics that you think need more investigation. Um, I'll, I'll share a document where we can have it as a parking lot to put notes, pointers, and um, even questions if you don't have the, um, if you don't manage to ask it, we can discuss it, we can discuss it later. Uh, so this is going to go up until um, briefly after lunch, I think. 
uh, unless we're faster and we finish earlier. Uh, you know, the, it's pretty flexible, the agenda these days. Uh, then the, uh, the rest of the day in the afternoon, we continue keeping notes at the parking lot uh, and uh, putting our thoughts there. We're going to have a number of breakout sessions from about, I think, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., roughly. Um, the topics we are not defined yet. We've got some ideas, but it, it should be ultimately a kind of team exercise and we can vote on, on what we want to discuss. Um, we can have the breakout sessions here all together or break out in smaller groups, go out there. Uh, and the target is basically to uh, have come up with, you know, design ideas and um, measurement methodologies that we can then go and apply, you know, build and apply in the months to come. So uh, I would like to see this as um, kind of um, uh, roadmap making uh, meeting for everyone and for our team, of course, uh, for the uh, for the months to come. And of course, any collaborations that we can build with any of you. Uh, so yeah, that's it for uh, from me. Any questions on the logistics or yeah? Could you just review the peer trend in the version of two sets. We could just kind of uh, go back to the slide. You mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's not the most recent one. If you go to this page and you scroll all the way down, you'll find the latest one. I don't even know when that figure is from. What does it say? It doesn't say the date. It's just a screenshot. But yeah, anyway, go on. It's on the stats page. I'll take a look. Yeah. Or if you have any question, more than more than happy to answer now. Uh, no, that's okay. 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 The latency figures that you should. Yeah. Uh, do they go through the Hydra nodes? They do, yeah. Yeah. So the Hydra nodes were there. Um, we didn't kind of isolate them or turn them off. So they are part of the network. So they are included. Yeah, in these results. So um, I'll, I'll be interested to see how those numbers would look if, if we take out hydrogen. Yeah. Because obviously the news, you shouldn't have hydrogen. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we the hydrogen, I'm sure, is fast. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is an experiment that we want to run, and there are several ways of doing that. Uh, we can either go the kind of hardcore approach and just tear them off. Uh, for a day and run those experiments and see if people start complaining, if things start start falling apart. <laughs> but is, is there a more graceful way of doing it? So can, can we yeah, that? I think a, a more graceful way of, like a smoother way of doing it is just, I don't know, is it, um, you can just ignore any response that you get from nodes that have the Hydra agent version and wait for, you know, other nodes to respond. I don't know if that's 100% accurate though. Yeah. No, because um, so the nodes that you're going to reach out that are not Hydra nodes are yeah. going to be connected to yeah. Hydra yeah. nodes that are going to have Hydra nodes. So you have yeah, just turn it down. Yeah. 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 So would this be an explanation why uh, the EU uh, like we should <coughs> be much faster than the US? Why um, would that be? I don't know, like, oh, that seems like there's a difference between like, the EU and yeah, yeah. the US or else there's like a classic Yeah, but why would that be because of hydro nodes? Maybe like nodes in the EU may be like, closer, like more connected. Um, yeah. Are the hydras deployed in Europe? Not only. I don't, I don't know the exact locations, but I'm pretty sure they're uh, in many different continents, not only in Europe. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the only way I can explain this difference and the better performance from EU-based uh, kind of requests that we did is that geographically is kind of in the middle of everything else, like North, South America, uh, Middle East, uh, Asia, and so on. So in a sense, no matter where the content is actually stored and assuming that you've got nodes all over the place, you know, you can kind of probably reach them faster in terms of like uh, speed of light latency. Um, that's an explanation, but we, we actually don't know. It's one of the things that we want to uh, dive deeper to 
figure out why this is uh, the case. All right then. Um, yeah, I'll I'll share the slides and a document to keep notes. Uh, feel free to use Slack as well. We've got a Slack channel track dash measuring APFS, so we can discuss there as well and ask questions. Um, yeah, let let's do it. <laughs>